All right, I'm going to expand on a couple of the shorts I made regarding Facebook Marketplace and just, it's basically, I titled it Delusional Sellers. There is a market price for pretty much everything. Uh, vehicles is a, like a really good example because it's just a, it's essentially a commodity. Like there is a blue book value of what something should be priced at. And it's reasonable for it to be priced within that range. So, you know, if you have a vehicle and it has a certain amount of miles on it and it has certain options, you plug all that in and you get a, you get a number. Uh, motorcycles is uh, not as liquid because uh, everyone needs a car in the United States. Like there's more people that need a car. If you go to like South America or Europe or Asia, motorcycles or little small mopeds are more popular because they, uh, they're cheaper. And, uh, you know, not everyone drives cars there. The infrastructure is not set up for cars. But here in the United States, motorcycles are, are somewhat seen as a, uh, like, luxury. It's not something that people use for transportation. So uh, cars tend to sell faster because people need cars. That's their primary source of transportation here in the United States. They don't really ride motorcycles uh, unless it, you know, you're, you're, uh, doing it as like a hobby. So motorcycles are harder to sell because there's not as big of a market for it. You know, people first need to have a car and then if they're into motorcycles, maybe they'll buy one, but people do not use motorcycles here for, for their transportation. A small percentage of people use motorcycles as their primary, uh, means of transportation. And that's different in other countries, but here in the United States, it's not common for people to ride motorcycles, okay? They do it, but they do it only during, you know, good weather, and uh, most people do not use them regularly. So if you're trying to sell a motorcycle, it's difficult because there's not a big market, right? Especially when you have used motorcycles. And the, the reason why there's not a very good market for, for that is people that have money, they'll just go buy a new motorcycle. They don't want to deal with a used one. They don't want to deal with someone that didn't do the maintenance on it. They don't want to deal with someone that maybe, you know, thrashed the bike and didn't really take care of it. They don't want to deal with it. So they'll just go pay 20 grand, 15, 20 grand for a brand new one. And you know, it's usually an older person, but that's not a huge percentage of the market. Not a lot of people do that. Okay. But the new sales of motorcycles are typically that type of person. Uh, it's totally a recreational type person who, who isn't really going to use it that much, but they have the money, so they just go buy a new one. Uh, I like to look at the bikes that are on the secondhand market because there really is not a good market for those. So if you're a buyer and you have cash, you can go get used motorcycles at a really good deal because there's not a lot of people that want to buy them. And the people that are selling them, for the most part, want to get rid of them. So they're... They're open to, most of them are open to reasonable offers if you're a serious buyer. So I've always made money on motorcycles. And the reason I've made money on them is because, or it's not that I've made money on motorcycles, but I haven't lost any money. You know, I, whenever I buy a motorcycle, I end up selling it for more than I paid for it. Okay. And the reason is because I always buy the motorcycle at next to nothing. Like I've, I don't think I've spent more than $3,000 on a motorcycle. That's the most money I've spent on a, on a motorcycle. Usually it's between 2000 and 3000 and you can pretty much always sell the bike between that amount. Uh, so I bought a BMW, like a big BMW K 1200 bike. I bought that five years ago and I paid $2,000 for it. And I, I ended up selling it like, uh, three years later for 3,200. So I made $1,200 on it. Now I had to get a new tire on it and I did the maintenance myself in terms of changing the oil and stuff, but I put 20,000 miles on the bike and I still sold it for $1,200 more than what I paid for it, uh, in 2019. So, uh, if you look out there, BMW is a good example because those bikes really lose their value. Similar to the cars after 10 or 15 or 20 years, the value of those BMWs just tanks. They basically go to like zero. So people are trying to get rid of those bikes for just a couple thousand dollars. 
and a lot of people just don't really use motorcycles you know typically a little bit older guys will buy them and then they just sit in their garage and they never really use them they might take them out you know for a couple rides during the year but not cross country they don't put a lot of miles on them so there is a lot of motorcycles out there that have low miles that are in pretty good shape and um anyways the point of this i, I made a couple shorts there is a market price for things, right? So I don't understand why, you know, of course people can ask whatever they want for stuff, but this guy, I, again, I paid $2,000 for this bike, a similar type bike. His bike was one year newer. So his bike was a 2000 and it has 10,000 miles on it. So it's 25 years old or 24 years old and it has 10,000 miles on it. Okay. I paid $2,000 for the same exact bike that was one year older and had 19,000 miles on it. Okay. I paid $2,000 for that bike in 2019. And this guy is asking $8,800 for the same bike. It's one year newer and it has 10,000 miles. And the blue book value is 2,500 if you're trading it in or like 3,700 if you're doing it up to a private party. Okay. So why would a private person pay more than $3,700 for that bike? And the answer is they wouldn't. This guy's asking $8,800 for a bike that the top of the range is $3,700 with all the characteristics, the mileage and everything, $3,700. And he's asking $8,800 and he's not negotiable. So I, it's not gonna sell, but I just don't understand that. You know, there's a market value for things you know, you could list your house for $10 million. No one's going to pay that if it's worth a million, right? It, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. There is a literal similar bike on there that is a 1999 and the guy's asking $2,900 for it. And it has 23,000 miles on it, which is still low because it's 25 years old. He's asking 2,900 and it's been on there for five months. So he hasn't been able to sell that bike at a much more reasonable price and he's been asking 2,900. This other guy's asking 8,800 for the same bike. The guy that's listing his bike for 2,900 has not been able to sell his bike for five months. During the summer, he had his bike on there in the spring and the summer and he didn't sell it. This guy just listed his bike for $8,800 in the fall. This is the Seattle area. It's raining. The weather is not warm. It's cloudy. It's cold. It's damp. It's rainy like every day now. Uh, and he's asking $8,800 for it. So I know everyone could say, oh, well, some people are just crazy and this and that, but I don't, it just doesn't make sense. Are you not trying to sell the thing? I mean, no one is going to be interested in buying that thing at anywhere near that. Not even close. I mean, the blue book, maybe someone pays $4,000 for it because they really want that bike and they're sentimental and they want one that has really low miles, but that, that, I don't think that would happen but that is literally 50% off of what he's asking. So it, it doesn't make sense, right? That's kind of the point of this, I don't know. I was just kind of, I wanted to vent about that because it's just stupid. Like I, who in their right mind is going to go buy that motorcycle, right? I can understand why people would want to go to a dealership because they just want something that's brand new. Like, you know, you're getting ripped off when you go to the dealership, you know, you're going to overpay. But you can't buy a brand new vehicle anywhere else. You have to buy it from the dealership. So if you're older or you have money, or even if you're younger, but you just really, really, really want a brand new vehicle that no one else has used, you have to pay that price because it's you can't buy a new vehicle from someone else, right? Any vehicle that you buy from a private person is a used vehicle. It's not new. Um, so I can understand why people would do that, but this guy's trying to sell a 25 year old motorcycle for over a hundred percent of what the blue book value is. It, it, I mean, it, it just doesn't make any sense. So I would imagine if, unless the guy lowers the price by half, that thing's not going to sell. And it probably wouldn't sell even if he did that, because like I said, some guy's trying to sell the same exact bike for the past five months, he hasn't been able to sell it. And he's been trying to sell it at 2,900. This guy's asking 8,800, right? So I, I know I'm kind of rambling about that, but it, 
I mean, come on. That's what I can't really quite understand about people. It's like, we live in a neighborhood where all the houses are the same. And we had a comp just sell yesterday for 500,000. But now I'm going to list my house at $1.5 million. Like, it doesn't make any sense. It's just stupid. <laughs> people would see you literally have the same house, the same lot as the person right next to you. And that house just sold for 500,000. So the most money we're going to give you is 500,000. Maybe 505,000, uh, you know, if, if we feel like it. But it wouldn't, it would just be stupid to pay more uh, for literally the same exact thing that someone is trying to sell for basically half as much or a third as much, right? You guys let me know what you think. I just had to talk about that because it's, it's just something I see and I, I just kind of go crazy because I don't understand what's going through people's head, through their head when they think that stuff is worth this much. But you, you, you look at, look online, look at what stuff is selling for, and then you're going to mark your stuff at three times what the market rate is and expect that anything's going to happen. I mean, you're just crazy. So let me know what you think. Subscribe. See you in the next one.